Long ago, we lost the ability, or most of the ability, to associate in free spaces. All of our places became mediated by one corporate entity or another. There are a few parks out there, maybe a few community gardens that are more or less free of economic influence, but ask this, were these spaces organically constructed or merely a reaction to heavily capitalized spaces? And if it is a reaction, is this too a form of mediation, a form of control? But now, it is more than just places that are mediated. Our social infrastructures have been rewired through ubiquitous technology, and that rewiring is now controlled by others. The path to each other is not straight, but a meandering series of algorithmic flexing and subtle nudges. Our thoughts, too, are really nothing more than pathways. Small firings in the brain, little sparks traveling from point A to various other points. They are children carrying sparklers through a darkened park, a lone child exploring a cave with a lantern. So if our thoughts and minds consist of pathways, and there are no free spaces anymore, then our brains are not ours. The pathways in our mind are full of billboards too, much like the pathways and roads of our world. This leads me to ask two questions. How did they get there? And what does it mean that they are there? The first question is simple. Our minds have been co-opted, not because our brains themselves have been stolen, but we've been presented with a second brain, corporately sure. baited, them defy you? which we've Did adopted. You them in any way? The old bait and switch. We spend most of our time running thoughts through our brain, constructed to be ours, with a few new bells and whistles. But it's not really ours. Our own brains gathered dust, paths overgrown. 